Hi, welcome to our Thailand News Today, our abridged version also will be Thailand News Today Lite. There won't be a lot of bells and whistles, but there is a lot happening and we wanted to bring you up to date, especially today when quite a lot of things have been announced that we think you need to know. So welcome to our special Sunday version. Sit back and relax, put your feet up. Let's get started. Today there are another 2,438 new COVID-19 infections in Thailand. Meanwhile, the BMA have announced the closure of 31 additional business types in Bangkok as of midnight tonight. The numbers a slight drop on yesterday's total of 2,839, but Sunday's totals are often lower due to the reporting cycle from provinces. Now, if you add up all the numbers over the past year or so, it shows that Thailand's COVID experience is far from being a foreign problem. Only 3,271 COVID infections out of a total of over 55,000 have come from overseas. The rest are all local transmissions. As of today, 24,207 people are in state care, about 19,000 of those in public hospitals and nearly 5,000 in field hospitals. 507 people are in a serious condition, 138 on ventilators. Meanwhile, provincial governors are being given the powers to impose tougher measures, including targeted curfews under new guidelines to be issued by the PM Prayut chan o -cha. More about that in a moment. From midnight tonight, a lot more services, public spaces and businesses around Bangkok will be closed. Additionally, events will be limited to just 20 people, down from the former limitation of 50 people. Face mask wearing will be enforced with a fine of 20,000 baht, a situation that's now in force in 42 other provinces around the country. But there's no curfew, although shopping centres must now close at 8pm, supermarkets at 9pm and convenience stores will have to close from 10pm until 4am. Here's a list of the businesses, public spaces and services that will have to close from midnight tonight in Bangkok. With many more businesses being told to pull down their shutters in Bangkok, there are now calls to just go to the next step and impose a full lockdown as the infection numbers keep creeping up. With the additional 31 types of businesses closed on top of the current restrictions in Bangkok, the BMA has all but imposed the L word without actually saying it. In the days before Songkran, PM Prayut chan o -cha, asked if they would restrict Songkran travel because of the rising case numbers in the tens at that stage, not the thousands, he said, whatever will be, will be. The reason is it's a matter that involves a huge number of people. The government will have to try to cope with that later. Well, the PM's later is now. Even last Friday night, PM Prayut said on TV that the government had no plans to lock down the country despite the daily case reports of over 2,000 for the past three days, nearly 3,000 yesterday. Medical professionals from a range of fields are now calling on the Thai government to go into full lockdown mode to control the spread of the virus. As it is, with the country broken into red and orange zones, there are enforced closing times. But the PM responded to the calls on his Facebook page, saying that he gave the governor's power to add local curfews if they deemed it necessary. Koh Samui is basking in glory today as it's listed as one of the best islands to retire by International Living magazine. The island's ranked number 10 out of the 15 islands listed by the magazine and is said to be affordable for retirees, as long as you can afford the Bangkok Airways flight to get there. Peace, privacy, a simpler way of life and strong communities are also listed as some of its benefits. And today is Anzac Day when Australians and New Zealanders commemorate and remember those who fought for their countries and the Commonwealth 
with the origins of the event forged in the Crucible of War at Gallipoli in Turkey in 1915. It's the most solemn day in the annual calendar for those two countries and usually commemorated with dawn services by expats around the world and at Gallipoli in Turkey. Again, this year, Aussies and Kiwis are honouring the fallen at a distance in Thailand and in other countries as well, where social distancing is currently the norm. But the spirit of the diggers and the other soldiers lives on as we thank them for their service to their nations. And as we share these photos of Mick Clark, the manager at the Hellfire Pass War Cemetery near the Burmese border, we recall the poem. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. And with those words, we thank you for watching our abridged, shortened version of Thailand News Today. We'll be back with uh, one of our usual programs tomorrow, probably Jet at the Helm. In the meantime, you can catch up with all the latest news that's happening, and there is a lot happening at the moment, at thetiger.com. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the videos, and we'll see you tomorrow.